Three, two, one, live. Yo, yo. We five of Two Shady Radio presents the Bone and Terry Show. How y'all doing out there? Five weeks, man. Five weeks. My name is Robert K, aka Bo, aka Two Face, and my man right here next to me is. Yeah, what's good with y'all, man? It's Terry, aka Shady, man. Aka, what's up, man? What's happening? I'm your partner, man. What's up with y'all? Yeah, appreciate y'all tuning in for real, straight up. Good to see you. Hey, we do appreciate y'all tuning in, and I, we want to get into our first segment. And you know, everybody always knows what that first segment is. And you know what? That section is called Get Him. Nobody was changing the logo, man. We talked about this last week. We said it was going to be a new logo, man. What happened? I didn't change Get Him logo because I like it. I like that logo. I like your glasses and that whole thing you got on. I do not like. I do not like. But you're lying. Huh? But you're lying. See, that's the part of giving you say that, but you do, though. That's the part. I can see it. I can see it in your face, bro. You know, you, you appreciate it. It's cool. You see me like this more than you see me without them. So let's be 100 about it. You look terrible. I tell you that right now. <laughs> I look the, the, did you get your eyebrows wound up, Charlamagne? You got your eyebrows? I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I look like, did you slick down? You better at least have slicked them down. If it was a razor on your eyebrows, <laughs> did they trim them bushy motherfucker down? Did you perm them? All I'm going to say is, you look like the creepiest guy in third grade. i tell you that right now. <laughs> this looks like a negative video. You ever seen a negative photo? It's like It looks like that's you're the skeleton version of me while I'm talking. You understand what? what I'm saying? For X-ray. You look like, skin you look like X-ray. <laughs> X-ray, nigga. You look like the Winnie the Pooh was alcoholic. And he got mad at honey and just started drinking whiskey. I'll take that. I'll take that. That's about right, bro. I'll take that. I That's a compliment. I no draws right now. You in the show. I'm like, no draws, nigga. I'm, I'm at home. Oh, draws is for the street. I don't know how y'all dress when y'all at home. Ain't nobody here but me. I ain't here for them draws on, man. You, this dude got on all new underwear. That's why he said that. You can tell. He got on new everything. It still ain't for four dollars. The shoes included. But I bet you it's all brand new. When you when did you learn to sharpen your front two teeth? Them two look sharp. <laughs> well, you know, my favorite comic in the game out of Chicago is D-Ray, you know. I've always imitated him and wanted to, you know, I've always aspired. And, you know, he didn't fix his team. He, he stayed who the fuck he was. And I was like, you know what? That's a gangster. And Ant, nigga, I'm going to keep my shit. I see. I see. <laughs> That's why people think maybe they look like we got the YouTube front team. You too big to win last team. You look like. You look like <laughs> How do you two my two see? <laughs> Two Face has been getting teeth whitening, y'all. Okay, he got a good job. He, you know what I'm saying? He, you know, I don't know if y'all know this now. He got a dental plan. He's been getting teeth. Look at his teeth. He's been getting teeth whitening. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> so now he's all about, oh, look at your mouth. He wasn't saying that before he started working a good ass job, though. Uh, yeah, that's all yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> not, you, know, you know what? It's not true. It's not I am an uh, advocate in brushing my teeth, unlike someone over here. My teeth are fine. <laughs> love my smile, bro. What the, look at this shit. I mean, seriously, man. I'm not even trying. It's a man like now. They force you to smile in jail. Me. I look like I mean it. I look like I mean it. That's why they love my smile. I'm sad yeah, as fuck. Now, Hey, you ain't mad at them, I'm more mad at that. Them glasses ain't got no lenses on for a third week in a row. And, yeah, man. This, uh, this is a spiritual experience with these glasses, man. Okay, you know right now I'm blind as fuck. You know this. You my, 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 I've known this dude since we was riding bikes. I can't see worth a damn, y'all. Contacts only get me so far. 
<laughs> I ain't 2020 with the contacts. You understand what I'm talking about? So, but I missed the glasses. I, I felt like, you know, I hit my 40. I want to throw some specs on, but I don't need none. So, yeah, that's why. Yeah, ain't nobody oh, laughing. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> nobody that's yeah, give it up for Two Face haircut, everybody. You can tell somebody get a haircut. They all look at you like, hey, boy, you ugly. Look at your ugly. You ain't got no good. You know, we over here trying to hide our hairline. <laughs> Our hot button topics of the week is yeah. first hot button topic of the week, guys. Is Memorial Day weekend just passed? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah if you know what? It felt like a holiday a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. It felt like a holiday, man. What did you get into for Memorial Day, bro? Uh, we did a little barbecue on a little, you know, hanging out with the family. I went, uh, hung out with pops and my moms and, uh, you know, uh, just hung out with them a little bit with the mask on. My dad made me tell the camp, you know, and, uh, oh, that's fine. hold your head straight. Yeah. You yeah, yeah. grab him by the top of his head. You grab your daddy by the top of the head. <laughs> I do. <laughs> hey, turn your head like this. Turn your head like, turn your head like right, that. No, he be leaning into the Clippers. And you know, <laughs> he trying to lean into the Clippers. Man. You got, get your head back over there, man. I'm trying to cut this side. You lean in. Get your head back over there. He's trying to cut his own hair with your hands. <laughs> like, just hold your hand straight like that right there. I'll move my head around. <laughs> like that right there. Just do that right there. <laughs> so, Don't move. Stop moving your hand. <laughs> so like me, I cut his ass ball. He said, "I want a little bit." You kept moving. You <laughs> <laughs> if you moved a little less, you'd have had a little more. Well, you know, but uh, other than that, you know, Chicago had a uh, bunch of shootings. You know, which is something that we try to hopefully try to prevent. But ain't nothing a lot we can do because these young kids and these older guys and these just beefs and two million people out here and ten people died. And it's bad, but I don't want to spend it like it's not bad. But you know, when you got two million, two point eight million people in the city, yeah. and ten people die, that's less than one percent. That's less than one percent. Let's, let's be clear: they don't include the Chicago land numbers. Yeah. They usually tend to just leave out all the murders in Riverdale and Robbins that's and Markham. You're, you're right. You're right. The Chicago you're right. Heights. They ain't bringing them up unless it's like a newsworthy thing. You know, yeah, it's even worse than you think. But that's just to be expected, man. Listen, you know, every year on Memorial Day, people got to die. You know this. Yeah. That's when all the, that's when everybody defrosted from the winter time, and it's like ain't no snow. You know, everybody coming outside. So everybody you've been looking for, you can find pretty easy. So that's that's just you know the, to to be straight up. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, but that's I've seen that cycle for years in Chicago. Mm -hmm. so now, yeah. now winter is over. You know what I'm saying, and that's what happened. Well, that's unfortunate, but you know, we trying to curve it. They trying to say it's the worst one, the worst Memorial Day weekend in almost five or six years. So y'all just be safe out there. We love y'all. God bless y'all. Y'all try to curve this violence. I know some of it is unavoidable and some of it probably ain't got nothing to do with us. So other than that, you know what I'm saying? It seems like we've been doing pretty well though. So how you, you know what it is out there? We need to get yeah, we need to get swords to become popular again. Yeah. See what I'm saying? If, if like some gangsters start, like this is my boy, Justin uh, Justin Carisi. He got this joke about swords, dude. It's hilarious. And it made me think about it. Like, yeah, what if thugs, like real thug cats just start walking through the hood with like long ass swords? You know what I'm saying? Just hey, like. You know what? And they could. Don't get them started, man. Don't but I mean, swords <laughs> at least a fair chance. You know what I'm saying? Damn, it's like yeah, I might want to fuck this dude up. If he ain't ready, he might catch it, and then you gone. But like you know, the shooting, just getting all these innocent people killed and all that. Some problems result in death, man. And unfortunately, that's just the human nature. And 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 because we have we're maturing, and you can tell this is if this is the most deadliest Memorial Day in five years. Be honest with you, I'm kind of proud of Chicago because, yeah, some things just get further than words. And we talking yeah. about a handful of people died on a holiday in Chicago. That's, That's I was I was expecting. I'm be straight up. I mean, I was looking. I was like, if is it hot? Ooh, e, damn, it's hot out. It's gonna go up. Yeah. Everybody gonna be out kicking it. So you know. I know that's it's just the statistics. It's just statistics, man. But you know, that's honestly, dude, it's improving from what I've seen. Yeah. Well, second topic. Hey, your boy is in the White House tripping again. 
<laughs> hey man, you know what? Why am I the only person in America that thinks Donald Trump is trying to get fired every week and they just won't do it? I really think, because I mean, in doing the history of any elected official, bro, like one dude, one dude that caught like smoking crack, man. It was during the crack epidemic, man. You should let him go. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, man, don't do that no more. Go to rehab or something. You know what I mean? But now this dude is just like, you know, come on, man. He's trying to get fired. Joe Biden went out, messed up, right? Joe Biden blew it. Joe Biden already had the black vote because he was like a third cousin because of the Obama thing. He did. He did. He did. And then he went messed up and said that. We was like, everybody was like, Joe, hold on, B. Like, everybody, you say what you want. We all did it. And Trump was like, oh, yeah? Watch this right here, though. <laughs> I'm going, oh, you hate. I'm like, wow, bro. You know, I mean, you, I mean, they are. He does kind of conveniently skip over black people in a lot of his pure hate speech. You know what I mean? Which is confusing, right? I know what I'm it is, but he don't really be coming like white at Negroes or African, whatever they call them. As black. I mean, blacks this week they just keep changing our name. I don't know what we are. Right. But what, what do you think about Joe Biden telling black folks you ain't black if you don't vote for me? But that's what I'm saying. It was, yeah, like I can get it. That was like a that was a vice president moment, you know, as we can remember, Dan Quayle. Very similar situation saying something not that dumb, but it was like equally as dumb, not the same type of stuff. But we were like, hey man, you're an elected official, bro. You got stuck on potato in front of kids. Yeah. <laughs> you got stuck on potato. He was like, uh, is it with and that was kind of like a joke moment. I know he pulled back, like, oh shit, I ain't talking to Barack. Like that's some shit he probably would have said to Barack and shit. Yeah, exactly. He'd be hanging out around him trying to get his swagger right. And it, it, it came out wrong, Joe. Okay? Yeah, right. <laughs> Joe, you did it wrong. I know yeah. it happened. He said, so, yeah, but, but before, everything wrong. But before I can even process, before I can even process that Donald Trump going to drop this one, I was like, wait a minute. That was really, are you, did you just sabotage Joe Biden sabotaging himself? He was like, wait, let me catch that so I can get the fuck out of here. Hey, dude. <laughs> what? This is the most. This is the most. I don't care about you, black people. Presidential race I have ever seen in my life, and I. I mean, I, we seen. I like radio, it, no. We seen radio <laughs> and, and Bush and them. Think about it, like, bro, this is crazy. Yeah. Like, I mean, I ain't all the way mad at Biden. I kind of said it myself. If y'all don't vote for Biden, y'all ain't black. So I can't. But you can't say it. Like, he can't say that. That's what I'm saying. He heard somebody like Barack probably told him that on slide. Like, listen, Biden, straight up though. No. Let me be one hundred with you. All right, you know, you know, now you know Barry. When he going to Barry, y'all heard about Barry. Barack Obama got all the ego called Barry. He's a smooth nigga. But he be like, hey man, listen, man. Be real with you, Biden. If them both of you they ain't black off top, you know what I'm saying? You got the black vote. That's just gonna oh, I'm stamping. You good. You good. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that Barry stamp on it, bro. You good. You know what I mean? And he was like, worried. You're like, you're worried. That was locker room talk. If I remember the Republicans telling us, that was locker room talk, wasn't it? Exactly. That's exactly he fucked up. Hey, so y'all, that was our hot buddy topic of the week. And now our next segment, let me find it again. Oh, God. I'll be running in the prizes. It's our artist spotlight and our artist spotlight. Oh, my God. Is a blessing this week, guys. Y'all don't understand for a too shady what this really means. And uh, this brother right here, this friend, this brother, this everything in comedy for us so far, like as far as like bringing us in, taking us under, taking us on the road. I mean, I, I would rather they said that we can we could be on our show. And uh, I know, Shady, you had a couple words. Right, I was shocked. I was like, "Go ahead, introduce our brother, man." Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I think you gone. He All right. Well, since he somehow went somewhere, I don't know where he is. I want to introduce my big brother, Damon, the greatest. Godfather, I got in the world. Yeah, what's up, baby? How you doing? What up, Rob? What up, Terry? Too shy. What's good with you, Damon? 
Good to see you, man. I think he got that Boost Mobile Wi-Fi over that day, man. I don't know. His stuff ain't working right. You know, yeah. I see around. him. Look like he in there now. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, big bro? Look. So, look. I, 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 this first part of the show, we like to just spotlight you. And, uh, I mean, right now, <laughs> inside of things, you doing Laugh Tonight, um, uh, Heaven 07. You did the talk, Showtime at the Apollo. You hosted the Kings of Comedy. You've been all over the place, but your recent is last tonight with Damon Williams. And I don't know, it's airing soon. And um, <laughs> man, uh, look, I, I, I pulled your resume up for Shady, and we took about an hour to read it. That's how long stuff you had. I mean... I'm serious, and, and I want to kind of, kind of break it, kind of down for you, because I don't think you really think about the things that you've done. You've done just another summer, like you this year, last tonight with Damon Williams, produced by you. I think it's five shows. You probably gonna get a whole another season. You did the plight of an independent filmmaker. You was in uh, off the grid comedy. You did uh, all kings, all the queens men. Not another black movie. Uh, Sex Ain't Enough, From Harvey to Hollywood, Squatters Rights. You was a writer on uh, Independent, the First Amendment stand-up. You were a writer on the Comic View. You hosted and, and did some hosting on the com on uh, Apollo. You was on the Funny Spot, Laugh of a Loser, Bad Boys. It could go on and on and on and on and on and on, on forever, <laughs> ever, ever, man. How does it feel to even have a resume so wonderful and so explicit, like it's amazing. Man, it, it feels like I should have a few more dollars. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, man. Yeah. I think but, you know, this is what I tell people, man. Um, you know, because still, still in all, this laugh tonight hopefully would, would be another plateau or another level of the game for me because it's a it's a streaming service. It's eight actually episodes produced. We got six. They're gonna do them two two per week whenever they get all the sound mixed up. I don't know. It's a new network. They just launched the whole platform. And yes, it's a black owned platform. I ain't gonna blame it on that because all the other shows are there. But see, we just wrapped in February the first week. So you know, right after we finished rapping, they had to start working from home because of the, the corona. Yo. So. So the other shows had already been purchased and edited and such. So Michael Jai White, Jai White and uh, Ray J have so a show on there called back, Pump. Um, there's some uh, original films on there as well. Yeah. So all that stuff was in the can. Our show literally just wrapped like the first week of February and then Corona hit. So wow. that's the delay. But but it's definitely coming. So I've been telling people, you know, I don't know if y'all can still, if y'all still there, but I'm yeah, going to keep we talking. Here. We here. Now I think it's just me. <laughs> we here. I just I just spotlighted you. Okay. Focus on you. That's cool. All right. So on that situation, man, um, That's like it, I say, man. it's definitely coming. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it coming out. Today, and bro. and it's it's representing a multicultural cast, man. You know, it's called Urban Flix, it's the, the network. Uh and I'm really proud of the guy who owns it, my man Herb, because he uh, you know, he gave me my shot to do my own platform and I had an opportunity. But we had a casting department and we you know, we scoured the, the the whole vast universe of comedy. We got Russians, Asians, Koreans, Hispanics, wow. both both Mexican and Puerto Rican. Uh, a lot of women, because uh, I insisted that we have more women in comedy. Um, and nine Chicagoans are on the eight or nine Chicagoans made it for that first season. And it is only season one. Let that be said, because my initial uh, desire, and I pushed for it hard as I could, was to shoot it in Chicago. I really wanted to shoot it right at Riddles because nobody's really wow. done a comedy show of that magnitude in a comedy club format, except for the funny spot when they did it at the, um, that was at the Comedy Union in LA. Um, but I really wanted to do it at home. So hopefully if the numbers add up and the network, you know, blossoms, then I'll have more uh, saying power and I can bring it home and we can do it at the crib and I can get some more of my, my folks on there or people's, whatever affiliation. I, <laughs> well, we already, we ain't going to get into that. We we know, you know what I'm saying? We ain't going to even play with you, baby. But, right. <laughs> don't have it with me. I'm coming to you. That's all I know. I tell you that. I ain't worried about it. I'm like, hey, 
I know Damon. Everybody leave me alone. So let's, hey, let's go, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you frozen over there? I, I think that that boost mobile Wi-Fi you got over there it really ain't working for some reason. And, we and if he's not frozen, that'd be an awesome practical joke because he hell he holding it. <laughs> Serious about that. I think he really ready to eat. <laughs> he like, look, if I'm sick of being on this show, just act like I'm frozen. <laughs> well, at least put my, my face up, you know. <laughs> hey, but look, while he frozen working it out, what we're gonna do is we just gonna play a quick clip from you. Uh let's do one at Riddle since we talked about it. And uh All right. and let's uh let's check it out. My man, you set up nicely over there, boy. Uh, yeah, thank thank you. y'all, man. First of all, it's overwhelming. I appreciate y'all coming. Give it up for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, glad to be up here. Glad to be doing this thing at home for 25 years. I've been doing this stand up, right? <laughs> Shoes. You got to try on your old outfit. Look at that. Don't like that one. <laughs> Get on something else. Don't like that. <laughs> then, the, then the millennials, they got to take a little selfie. Yes. <laughs> and then a few of y'all might have a little apparatus under your clothes. Uh, <laughs> you I ain't in your business, but there's some under armor in the room. There's some First of all, y'all doing that for each other. Seriously, men don't give a damn about your weight. I ain't never heard two dudes say, yeah, but look at the waist on that. Look at this bitch in a full body cast walking around. You know, rearrange your organs. Tell yourself a hysterectomy trying to have a waistline for your damn Instagram or some shit. Even to take a picture 
question for ladies, more tricky than us. Right, fellas? Tell three dudes that take pictures. All right, Flynn, go ahead, squad up, bitch. <laughs> Tell a woman she about to be in a picture. Wait a minute. <laughs> the titties up, ass out, kicks down my foot. <laughs> Let me see that. Hold on. Don't post that shit that way. Oh, hell no. Delete that shit. Do it over. Titties up, ass out, kickstand. Ooh. Oh, why you got 18 of the same picture of your phone? Because you ain't got it right. You can't. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Let me bring you back. Oh, my God. That is hilarious. Y'all don't understand how funny this dude is. He probably made most of that. <laughs> You're hilarious, man. It's, it's time for our artist interview. I don't know where the hell Shady went. <laughs> I think hey, man, I was gone, too. I was trying to... I don't know what clip you showed, but I'm glad it was funny. Man, hey, it was you at Riddles, man. You was just freestyling, just going in. And it, it just shows, like, um, when, when you go to a show because you do shows pretty much a lot of people don't realize that you probably do a show in a different before the corona you were hosting a show every <laughs> different day every week how how and how and please explain what to the people what i'm talking about because i saw it happen and i'm like i i need my so well, you want me to explain how I do it, you said? Yeah, how do you have the energy to do oh. seven shows and seven takes every week? Like, because you would be in San Jose one week. You will be in Chicago hosting riddles. Then you will be like in St. Louis hosting stuff. How do, is that oh, man. Let me tell you how and why. Um, you know, as you know, as a comic, man, that's our ultimate goal is to be able to, to tour and, and travel and you know, go to different clubs and, and uh, different venues around the country. So once the opportunity started coming in, I, I never turned nothing down. You know what I'm saying? I really, truly enjoy what I do. It's my passion, and I work long and hard, hard to get to the point where people will pay to see me or promoters will take a shot and let me come and do the thing. So the Funny Bone chain really, um, the guy Dave Stroop from the Columbus Funny Bone, he really – is instrumental in me moving around as much as I have been because they run about maybe uh, 12 or 14 funny bones and a couple of improvs. So as he started to figure out, people would come out to see me after being on time, join her for a while. They put me in the rotation. So how I do it, um, like I said, the cool thing about our jobs when it's working, you know, we only do it you know, three or four days a week. So you got three or four days to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Man, I hope I Ahead, two seconds, you. man. Check. I, tell, I can tell y'all personally how he do it. He do it the same way he been doing it since the first time I seen him, man. And that was crazy. Like all these years later, to be out here in California and get an opportunity to work for you, and it felt like for the first time in a long time the way it always felt. You know what I'm saying? It was Damon rocking the room. You know what I'm saying? It's us trying to get up on the show. <laughs> you know, hey man, come on, man, we get on the show, man. We no, no, we, had time time. Time. we had a good time out there in Tommy T's, though, man. You did your thing, bro. Yeah. Seriously. Thank you, man. And, bro, you were holding that flow, though, man. It was fun. It was good. I hadn't seen you live in a long time, so it was just also fun for me to catch you again and learn the way I always did, learn from Damon, you know? Man, I appreciate it, man. But, you know, the thing of this is, we've been all doing it a while now. You guys are veterans, you know what I mean? So you all know the answer to some of these questions. I, mean, I know y'all just asking it for the people because, right. you know, yeah. you got to... You, you gotta, um, you gotta feel this thing. It's gotta be in your soul that you want to do it. Cause there are nights when you might have a toothache or sprained ankle or argument with your woman, or you know, when nice. you get to that mic and all that goes out the window. Or sometimes you bring it with you and you take it to the stage and you find some gems out of that. You know, you're like, man, thank God for that argument. <laughs> yeah, man. Straight up, yeah, yeah man. So. It's just fun, man. I know I have to jump in now, man. I go put some money on my no, cable real quick because yeah, I know you got a bunch of questions to it. You got to pay PayPal. Right? You know, man, they was tripping. But no, nah, man, it's a uh, 
it's just cool, man, that, you know, some people can come in this game. I seen, you know, like you, Damon, as well. You see a lot of people that are funny, man. And and one of the things, and one of the reasons I was excited to bogat you on this show is because I don't even know if you really know this, dog. Like, you were the first comedian to ever introduce me on a stage at a comedy club. Wow. Well, which one was it? Riddles, uh, P&J's or it was, TNT? It was 830 Riddles Comedy Club. Oh, wow. You, you were feeling in for D-Ray. And uh, I was like, yo, man, I think I want to, you know, I already been hanging out, kicking it. You know, so I've been at all them other joints you just mentioned, just hanging out, learning. Right. Now I was like, I think I got it. And he was like, cool, man, I'm going to give you five minutes. And I did all right, right? But this was yeah. funny. Like, now I'm walking, I'm walking around like I'm a comic. I'm like, yeah, I'm a comic. You told D-Ray, and you told D-Ray, right? And D-Ray was like, he was good? You know, he had to be like, oh, you want to go up on a 1030 show? I was like, whatever, man, that's cool. Yeah. How much want me to do? Five? You want me to do five? I'm, now I'm cocky. <laughs> and bomb my ass off. Man, show. What's up, bro? I didn't know what I was getting into. Dude. I didn't know what I was getting into. I already knew you was going with that because that was night and day, baby. <laughs> that was, look, that was that was uh, Section Eight and and homeowners. That, that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was two different markets. See, I didn't understand how to swing in the market yet. Mm. You know, they was with me though for two minutes. They was like, "Yeah, mm, now nah, we straight." <laughs> Yeah, see that the eight thirty, the eight thirty was softball. That ten thirty was uh, uh, the league ball pitch. Yeah, it was man. fastball. Man, yeah, man. Negroes, man. It was like I didn't want to get up at ten thirty because if you came in there too late and you know D Ray doing this thing, he got him rocking. Then you got Marcus Cole doing some nice ignorant funny right. shit, and Marlon might yeah. get on fire on your ass. And then yeah. Lil Rail come in and do some stuff. And then right. like, man, you know you the OG. You want to go? I'm like, hell no. <laughs> Everybody trying to put a hole in the stage. Burning a hole in the building, but that's how our circuit is. But I would still do it, you know what I mean? And I'd find my way through it. But some nights I'd be back there like, man, I ain't got nothing for this. Not right now. Not, not, I ain't supposed to be, I ain't about to go up here and be better than this. You know what I'm saying? So everybody would think, well, you know, I had a name for myself, but shit, it was some nights, man. In Chicago, any given night, you could find yourself behind one of them buzz saws. And you have yeah, a buddy. Jeff B might get on fire. You know, Dion Cole might slide through Tony Scope. Kenny Howe might do some yeah. You know, yeah, and you tell him he might fall through. Yeah, so, you know, that, but that that's what, that's why you guys, when you move around now, you can do any circuit. If you came through that time and that part of life, it can't get no more like challenging as far as knowing how to conquer a room and how to follow other comedians because it was it don't matter where you went up your ass was you yeah. got across the heat period Every time. In the opening, you got to swing it right so yeah. Teddy you got you got one more question for Damon before we play his next clip oh uh, yeah but I also wanted to point something out Damon after that show that ten thirty show D Ray said now you a comedian. He said, now, now that you felt both sides of it, he said, I knew that was going to happen. Now you're a comedian. Now you got to understand, yeah. bro. You gotta, now you, now you got to learn how to do both. And I was like, oh, okay. That was an immediate lesson. That's the difference. That's what I'm saying. It was like we had you and Damon and Corey and fucking Dion and everybody else, you know, and they were teaching as much as, you know, they were punching up jokes. You know, they, they, we all supported each other in a way that was very interesting that I didn't even know that we were so privileged to have. Now, the support system in that era, man, I don't know what it's like today, uh, and I hope it's just as well, because we've been known for that around the country, because, uh, you know, the way we traveled in packs, like when we did Comic View back in the day, it was so many of us, and they like, man, you Chicago dudes is unified and all that, so I hope it's still like that. But it was just a thing to do, man, because we want everybody to, to do well, you know, everybody having fun. Uh, we was all learning at the same time, and we was all preparing ourselves for, for what was to come, so... Those that was a lab, man. That whole era was a lab. It was yeah. generational, you know, because Leon Rogers are coming in, you know, and, and man, just right. do some ignorant with thing with his one leg rolled up, and you know, man, he <laughs> <laughs> rolled a towel up and turned the towel into a deal. Maybe yeah, he was doing that. Man. It was a lot going on, man. It's I'm so glad tip. that to be honest, that we came up in the era that we came up in, you know, because some of these cats now that are coming out, you know, and probably been out for the last three to five years or say, and they've been in social media comics, but they didn't have to go through that gauntlet 
you know, they didn't, and they didn't have that support system because they had to figure out how to be funny. And I don't knock anybody that does social media. People that are the social media community, they figured out how to work the, the era that they're in. So it yeah. takes a certain amount of brilliance to get people to go viral and, and figure out the mentality of that. So yeah. no knock against them. But they didn't get that traditional stand up, you know, tested by fire, you know, and that's the other thing. The, the, okay, it was cool you came at 8.30 and you did well and you bombed at 10.30 and you understood, but the fact that you came back after bombing, that's right. when you know you're coming. Damn. Especially when you know the same people are going to be there because yeah. they come yeah. every week. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, they'll start mumbling. They're like, oh, they're that dude up again? Nah, here we go. Let me get another Man. drink. Look, I ain't going to say her name, but back in the TNT and BNJ's <laughs> era, it was one female, she used to bomb so bad and she used to get so hostile with the crowd that <laughs> any time she went up, whenever I said, okay, I got a young lady coming to stay, they would just start booing already because they thought it was her. <laughs> <laughs> I no. Would say no, it's not her. <laughs> Y'all remember the pack be like, I can't believe it. I can't hey, believe it. it. <laughs> I know y'all know who it is. I know y'all know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna say that. No, we ain't gonna bust her out, but she used to be so hostile because she'd do a joke oh, and it just it just sit there. And it might sit there, it might not bomb, but it might not hit. And she'd be like, what's wrong with you, motherfucker? And just... <laughs> it was no, no, no. Yeah. You know the funny thing is, though, y'all asked me to put her up on purpose. Y'all used to do that. <laughs> no, man. I couldn't yeah, you... not put people up, man, because... You got to just be... You got to let them come back, man, so they can redeem. And anybody that could take them goddamn chin blows... <laughs> every week and come back they meant to be i'm gonna tell you somebody else who used to kind of get catch it early at all jokes back in the day but he he turned the game around and was a killer stand the man you know yeah. straight up the rest the rest of on wednesday day. night stan would come up there and do his little thing and his cadence was like it was and they weren't ready for him and he hadn't figured his, his voice out as far yeah. as his style and you know he'll get some corny little laughs, but every once in a while they be shaking the keys or boom. You know we said that on Apollo night, it's like you shake your keys when people do. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so that, that, yeah, we let them. You know, you, you can still keep going, but you start hearing them keys. I gotta come get you. So <laughs> <laughs> get your ass out of here, yeah, man. Right. You that music, yeah, but, but but he, he never quit, <laughs> man. Well, I'm telling you, that dude became a beast, right? Yeah. Hey, yeah, man. With the with the culture nowadays of the comics being so sensitive to their art, do you think they could have survived in the keep jingling era? <laughs> the jingling. The jingling. <laughs> Sound like a thirty for thirty now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I, to be honest, I think we had a better opportunity to, to survive. This might be more challenging now with our styles, the way we used to do it in today's society because the audience and the, the sensitivity and the, 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 the cancel culture is so soft that you can't talk about shit no more. You know, yeah. um, back then, you know, you could go you could go full out. I mean, you could do like retarded yeah. jokes and say the word retarded and, and yeah. fag jokes, you know, so you could say fag and I ain't trying to just be yeah, I'm now. talking to Too Shady. That was half our that's half our time right there. I'm like, is he running right. down our set? Yeah, all them jokes. That's all we got. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a two say. That's a two say set. Because <laughs> 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 they like, me too came along. It was like, we got it at the right <laughs> time, bro. We was like, peace. Hey, 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 I can have that. Yeah, so now, you know, now <laughs> the audience, I think the audience is so sympathetic to everybody's, you know, Everything yeah, well, that they, they, they even have more sympathy for comedians. They have more patience to allow because you know back in our era, man, we came out. If you went bang, 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 standing ovation, you basically didn't do your thing. You know, like <laughs> people were shooting for, for standing o's, and you know, because Def Jam was about that. That was that was the culture of Def Jam and Comic View. You come out, you do your opening, you do your two middle bits. And your, your opening got to hit, and your clothes got to be like, and I'm out this month. You know, you got to right. leave. Right? right. So what I would do, what I would do, <laughs> bit, I had 
That was my last five minutes of my set, which was to build up, to build up, to build up to. Ah, that would be my comic view set the following year. So that's how I was kind of writing my set. So that I was I was planning on the O's. You know, you had to plan on yeah. that. Ah, you know. Um, now, the only person that didn't have to do that because his style was so unique was Dion. You know, Dion Cole. He was so laid back that you know, for him to for him to end like that would be against his character. So. Um, I mean, we just, we all are blessed, man. That's the thing. Wait a minute, David. Wait a minute, wait a minute. But remember when he used to do, all right, I'm going to go. Yeah. He used to tear rooms up with that. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. <laughs> with destroyer room. Naked, dude. I was going to joy, bro. Yeah. In the living room. That, was, that, was so, um, that was so brilliant because he was the anti- <laughs> thing that everybody was doing because we was all yeah. uh, trying to end on them. And I'm out of it. He like, right. you know, a lot of times people do, I'm just going to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. And let me tell yeah. everybody that sees this, I don't care if it's five years from now, watch Dion's last special, man. That Netflix is flaming. It's it is banging. banging. He, he, he came in, but I got to say straight up, they need to go back to the last special, the one that came out before it too, man, because I love the Netflix special. It was dope to actually see him execute that because he smashed it. But the, the Dion Cole's uh, seminar, Cold-Blooded Seminar, yeah, no yeah. special in history sounds like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, all this stuff going to be great, but I, I really I really said, you know how you sometimes, you don't, I, I didn't look at it as that's my homie special. I set myself up. I got my recliner straightened out. Yeah. I had my little beverage, my little, my little, you dig? And uh, got in my mode, and like I'm about to watch a stranger, man. And that dude, bang, that special, man. It was dope. Yeah. So, and, and it's a lot. Let me say this too, because I don't have a special, but I do do a set in all of the episodes of Laugh Tonight. Laugh Tonight going to remind you of that that feeling, that vibe of Comic View and Def Jam. Okay. Where, you know, three comedians come out. They do their thing, but the, the added element is I have a sit down chat with them before they're set. So you get to hear some backstory and some information about the comic, which makes you even more endeared to the people. Because some of them I had met for the first time on set. You know, I saw some of their work online, whatever, with the, the whole casting process, which was so strenuous, man. We had a list. My master list might have had 150, 200 comedians on it. Because wow. everybody I could think of, I submitted, you know, name after name after name after name. And then they, they say, well, this person, they started, they needed demographic. They really wanted, listen, they wanted all all, all cultures, you know, black, white, Latin, uh, you know, Hispanic, Asian, you know, European. And then they right. wanted uh, LGBTQ. They wanted little people. They wanted me to find fucking midgets, like a serious That's situation. We, we had Brad, the, the cat, you know what I'm saying? So they wanted every little category. Yeah, we had little Brad Williams, but he, he bailed out. Uh, I had a Canadian comedian. Right, cool. I met buddy. He cool. Yeah, you know, he just he just came up short. But um, yeah. <laughs> he know he knows, Damon. Trust me, he knows. That exactly. man, little. So, well, I saw so, the first. So gonna be more season. I'm just looking forward to the first couple of episodes taking place so that uh, we can you know start a new tradition and not only uh launch some new names around the country but also uh reinvent and reintroduce people to the the comedy scene because there's no shows out there like that that's you know the showcase platform with comics you know hitting the, the five to seven minutes or the ten minutes set and I, I want that we need that because you can't get it through this now, you know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't going to get it from followers, you know what I'm saying? We need a platform, so hopefully this thing takes off and everybody gets a shot at it, because y'all know I look for my hometown people, first of all and foremost, anyway. All day, every day, and that's why when uh, I wrote this show, I was hoping, I didn't think you would have the time, because I know I knew that you would be too busy, and I am truly honored and blessed that you say, yeah, I, I, I try to model my new career off of a lot of the stuff you do, Shady knows this because when I when I do things, I like to model myself off things, the career that I want. And I know a lot of people uh, don't think about how much work you do, and that is more inspiring to me than anything. So I salute you, brother. I got a I want to show you if that's okay, and uh, we go. Uh, uh, hear a couple more jokes from you and then get some replies and then uh, uh, we'll go from there, okay? All right, let's do it. All right. Who that? 
And y'all been on the island? Who been on the island since Sunday? Right, since Sunday? How's the, how's the household? Everything still good? Everybody still good? Yeah, Thursday right around when the friction kick in, y'all get tired of yourself. This one used to say, you know what, it really ain't a good idea to go hang out with our friends and live in the same house. You find out who was the late night one that pisses me up. Every also we got one dude be on the couch. It's 3.15. This is Looking at them two channels you got. And I don't know who owns these houses, but we need some premium channels. I know that. You can only watch so much damn MSNBC. Then you got the early person. Everybody on vacation. We trying to sleep in here. Somebody down there. 6.15 a.m. Just round and just making noise. Six o'clock, you got you. 5.30, 4.30, shit, wow! What, what's, what, what's open? Why you up so early? Your day is done by 9 so you're in the military. <laughs> now what's your job? Turn on the sun? What the hell you doing? 4.30, you like, let me get up and uh, turn on this goddamn sun. Get the world started. And put on a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm just dirty, bro. It's fell down the street. I'm down the street from Facebook, man. They taking up all the internet. They, I'm literally right down the street from Facebook. Oh yeah, you losing all your internet service. Yeah, I get it. So that Damon, look, you do so many shows. I always want to know um, when you. I know a lot of audience members ask this question. A lot of they want to know this from comments. When you do a show, is it more like your mood that day? Or do you particularly write sets for where you are? Uh, it depends. Like, like for riddles, riddles was like really still the lab for me. So, you know, I'm, I'm always gonna have a couple of bullet point topics, you know, to fall back on in case my spontaneous don't work out. But mm -hmm. I, I kind of have a set. Of course, we all have a set. I got my master set. If I'm headlining, right. I know I'm gonna do an hour, hour ten, something like that. Then I gotta have some of the basic, the classics, and some some structure to it. But what I prefer to do is host, and then drop the bits in in between each comic, and that that's when I freestyle the most, and that's when I'm most that's my creative process. So um, so it varies. Now sometimes there might be a corporate gig or or, or a, a club that's in you know one of them conservative markets where I feel like I have to kind of cater to what the situation is. But what I stopped doing was um, switching and code switching as far as, you know, if I have a bunch of white people, uh, I'm gonna try to do jokes that white people might get. I just mm -hmm. basically stay true to myself and they gotta come on this ride with me because I'm the one that's on the stage. If you came to see me, hopefully you did your research. If you didn't, this is your chance to experience what I do versus me trying to do what I think you want to hear. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. Man, that's a beautiful man. Like, I, 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 I envy your career because I need one just like it. So, uh, man. <laughs> man, I just can't imagine being on the road. And you probably know directions to every town, everywhere. When, when, <laughs> you, when you out there doing comedy, is there is there one particular show? Is there one particular time that you can remember that just sticks out as like? you know, makes it worthwhile being the comic. Uh, Ooh, I caught him. I, I knew mean, I was going to get it. Like a trophy show. <laughs> Do you have well, That one? would be... I mean, actually, I got a set that that's... Um, I've been running a little bit when, we, when the, the pandemic first hit. I was running this set from a show in Atlanta, man. I've had some great shows in Atlanta, but this one particular show was a show with Nephew Tommy. And, oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and I had on the white, the cream. The best, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that whole set, man, was like one of them, one of those ones that was a banger for me. Also, when I did um, First Amendment, doing it at home at the Chicago Theater, that was great. Right. Yeah, that was fun because I have the whole set because I have my son in the audience on the bootleg. Uh, so I, we got the whole thing versus what they showed. 
And that that one ran through, and that's available actually on my YouTube somewhere. Um, so and those, David, have you performed on every comedy production filmed in Chicago since you started? Because I feel like any major production that came through Chicago, Damon Williams was attached at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, I, comedy, never did, I never did who's got jokes. I didn't do who's got jokes. <laughs> Um, because at that point, I didn't, I didn't think it would be beneficial for me because if I didn't win, then it looked like, you know, it's a step back. And, you know, you just, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know who I would have been up against. I, I might have won, but I don't like right. to compete in a stand up format, even though Comic View initially was a, a competition. Right. Um, I don't think comics should be matched up head to head and, 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 and as an audience. Um, and a couple of unexperienced or inexperienced judges decide, you know, if you was better than the next person. So I stayed away from that. Uh, um, but any other, most of the TV stuff that came through, you know, I was part of until I was to the point where it didn't make sense, like Heart of the City, it didn't make sense for them to come and get me like I was an undiscovered comic, you know, so yeah. stuff like that. So it's time That's the That's same reason I passed. That's the same reason I passed, David. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, I, don't know. I mean, I mean, it's not fair. I've already done it once or twice. I got to, you know, I got to Google me. You know, I did a couple things, you know. Same reason you passed gas, man. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Why don't you, why don't you broadcast from your own house? Do that. Hey, yeah, Chuck, don't do that. <laughs> you a bar. You're a time show. Yeah, doing this damn. I'm bad, dude. Broadcasting from the treehouse, a little house there. Yeah. I can't even. I can't even argue with that. Yeah. Hey, but, but I gotta tell you something though, for real, because this was crazy. And Damon, I don't know if you see this thing. When I when I hosted for Damon, it was a woman that came to see every single show with Tommy T's and Pleasanton. Shout out Tommy T's and Pleasanton too. But it was, remember that lady with the Mustang? She drove a Mustang. And I was playing with her all weekend and she loved yeah. it. And we had a thing. And she knew it was all lighthearted and it was beautiful. Like your audience, man. Thank you for allowing me to get a chance to play with them, man, because you have such a great audience, bro. Yeah, and that's that comes from uh, the longevity standpoint. And the, the, uh, the thing of, that's one thing I want to tell everybody. If you do this thing and you're consistent, that's the thing. You just have to be consistent. Your opportunity is going to come, but you can't, you know, waver in the meantime. So once you're in it, you know, even if your circumstances didn't allow you to stay in it, once you're back in this thing, man, just be consistent so your fan base know that you're trying. Cause they they wait to see you do things, you know what I mean? So that that group of people, though, they were uh, there's a cruise group, uh, Blue World Travel Festival. See, that, yes, sir, I remember. Yeah, yeah, they all come to Tommy T's because they're off in the Bay Area, and they they really that's how I got that gig, and that's how I was able to come back and do the, the monthly joint because they knew my people was gonna come out. So those people, you know, we got a love relationship. They like family to me. So that lady in particular, she just loved comedy. She might be at every comedy show they have. Period. It might well, not she be been there a few times for sure. But I mean, I've hosted it. Tommy's a few times. She ain't never been there every day. <laughs> you know, she was there on Sunday. Different yeah, seat. That she's yeah, cool. She's a cool old lady. Yeah. Well, well, Damon, thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you. Yes, sir. Uh, if you want to stick with us, you can. We is not kicking you off at all. Um, Straight up. It's totally up to you. Um, um, we just want to say thank you. We appreciate your career, everything you've done for us. Uh, continue yes, to be a success and a blessing, and we're gonna continue to promote you, and and, and hopefully you, you get to that super next level past everybody we ever know, so that I can be like my big brother's dad. Yes, I'll be like, hey man, let me in the back. I just want to come hang out backstage, man. You know, and you know, you know, you're gonna have a pass or an opening set. Don't even trip. Y'all know how I get down. I bring my people with me. Uh, I will hang out there, but I did one of these earlier, and then I had my live, and and now you guys. So I got to, you know, I like to try to keep my week quarantine for real. I to my live yesterday. Oh yeah, when I was doing, I partied to your live, bro. We was listening to your live. I came in right around the time you dropped up black coffee. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Come on, that thing, man. Five to seven, five to eight, sometimes, and uh, yeah. just hear some good grown music stuff. You don't hear on the radio and stuff. Something I never know where I'm gonna go. Sometimes it's old school hip hop. Sometimes it's current. You know what I'm saying? So kick me yeah. up, y'all. For people looking for me, everything I do is on DamonWilliamsComedy.com. And like I said, I will hang out with y'all. But first of all, I ain't even eight, and my wife got on. <laughs> my wife got on some dudes today, so I gotta beat it. <laughs> all right. Yeah. No. 
<laughs> yes, sir. Oh, man, Much man. love, fellas. Man, y'all keep doing this. This is a great platform, man. And I hope it grows and blows up. Anything y'all doing, let me know. And I, if I can push it, I'll help you. There's a, a show we're doing called Comedy Squares, The Comedy Squares. That's on Instagram. Look for it. It's a, it's a Zoom virtual show. And we're going to be looking. They're going to be casting for more comedians as well because it's going to be a continuous thing once it gets picked up. So let's do that. I guess laugh tonight will be on soon. I'll come back on the show and pop in and let y'all know it's running. All right. Thank you, brother. Thank you. We appreciate y'all. That's Damon Williams. Don't forget to check him out on Laugh Tonight and uh, everywhere else. You know, he's online. So his Instagram and Facebook is all at the bottom. Check him out the whole show. You got him. Damon Thanks Williams, for having me, guys. Appreciate you. Thank you. We appreciate you, brother. All right. Hey, now uh, we're going to jump into our unsung heroes because I got my boy and he is an amazing three-point threat. We talking superhero. If you ask me, I'm talking Colin Kaepernick type brother because what he did was something that was different and he stood up something that most people would refuse to stand up for and that's themselves. So I want to give a shout out and give much more to my to the the big homie, the the three point threat, <laughs> Craig Hodges. How you doing, man? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's up, Craig? Okay, did you hear that shit? Yeah, 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 man. Much respect. Okay, good, good, good. So, uh, Craig, man, you know, we appreciate, you know, you doing all these things for us and, um, you moving in a positive direction for black people. And um, we um, were getting a lot of things online about the last dance. And I don't want to get into all the way into that because this is not what this is about. This is about you being a hero because we respect it. But what I want to know is, uh, as far as your perspective on um, what made you become an activist, could you kind of talk about that? Uh, I was blessed to grow up uh, Chicago Heights uh, at the height of the Civil Rights Movement in the early 60s. I was born in 1960, and my mom was the secretary for the Civil Rights Movement in uh, Chicago Heights. And you know, right. you know baby, so at that time, so for me, I was I was sitting between my mom, who was the secretary and the president of the organization, and I saw live leadership at a time that was critical for black people in America. And then I had a chance to go away to college to Long Beach State and study under Dr. Maulana Karinga, the founder of Ponga, Dr. Colin Muhammad, um, Dr. Amin Ra. So I was blessed to have had a great early upbringing in as far as uh, community service, what it was about community organization, and to see it up close and personal and then get the chance to go to school and see that, you know, that I was part of the movement. Um, but no, to me, it was a little boy when we were doing the voter registration and that kind of thing, and we were boycotting schools, that we were actually, when we would get a stack of flyers, we were just going to have our flyers on our bikes real quick so we'd get back and play baseball, not knowing that this was something that was really going on in our lives at that period of time. So, man, I was blessed to, to have a great foundation in as far as a, in the support base in the Hodges household as well as our community. Man, that's amazing. Um, also, uh, I know I said we what goes. Is there anything that you do want to say about the um last dance? While we, well, you know, for me, it's one of those things that I thought it could have been a lot more um unifying as opposed to the divisiveness that, is, that now we see that it's caused within us as a people being within our community as both athletes and um professional basketball players and the fraternal order that, that uh, supposed fraternal order that we have. So when I look at today, even when I hear about, you know, there's a change somewhere flying around that MJ didn't want Isaiah to be part of the dream team, you know, that bothers me. So it's not just, now it becomes a, co a co um, compilation of things, not just the last dance, but also the fallout from the last dance and things surrounding, you know, just MJ and 
And I feel like more it's bigger than MJ, man. It's part and part culture of uh, America and the remnants of racism and, and those places of racism that, you know, are throughout the society, man, whether it be professional baseball, basketball, football, or the branding of our athletes. Hey, yeah, real quick, Bo, because I'm not sure if, if you if, can you hear me. Craig, can you hear me? I, I can't hear you, brother. You yeah. can't hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Hey, man, just as a question, man, I mean, because I, I watched you as, you know, part of that first team, man. Like, I'm from Markham, man, and, you know, you being from the Heights, man, being on the Bulls, you know, winning that first championship, like what it did to the city, man. But, like, I, I'm just curious, man, if somebody is from the land that I'm from, man, how did it feel to bring that home to Chicago land? Like, personally, I mean, and you knew the power that came with that, but how did that really, how did it impact you immediately? Well, I, I couldn't really, I could hear you, but I couldn't really hear the... the could you repeat it for me, What he asked, what he asked you was... Uh, how did the uh, winning? Because we both from Markham, me and Terry, we both. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So being from Markham, we wanted to kind of you being from around the way, right around the corner from us. Uh, we yeah, and bringing the championship home not once but twice. How what immediate feeling did 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 that bring to you? Bring to you? An impact on your life, like what real impact, impact on your life. Did, did you feel from that? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's part of a combination of, we call it dreams, but we call it more work, training, and with, with the path that you've been on. So I was blessed to get a chance to watch the Bulls struggle when I was growing up, watching Norm Van Leer, watch the late Jerry Sloan, um, who recently passed, and, and just to get a chance to come home after having been six years in the league, understanding what it's about to be a professional and coming home to win a championship, you know, knowing that it was just a matter of time, not knowing that we were going to have the triangle in a year and a half and the impact of the triangle with the latex winner with, you know, being my college coach, knowing that with your system, with the right player that we have, there's no way we can lose. So being from, being from the Heights, knowing with my mom and men, as far as the movement was concerned, and for me, as well as things, basketball has taken me places and gotten, giving me a chance to see things that you would love for your family and, and for your homeboys and for the community you see. And the closest thing you can do is try to your best to share with them. So when we won, championships has always been a thing for me to try to share as much of it as I could with, you know, those who were my support base. And that's been black people, man. And mm -hmm. we kill people all the time. We wouldn't have run nothing in the city without you know, the, the brothers and sisters who really had our backs, whether it be MJ selling his gym shoe or whether it be supporting us in the senior citizen home where all the sisters and brothers will tell us that they put on their jerseys before games. And, you know, it's a motivation factor in that, man. And, and I feel so, and I still feel blessed, man, to be able to have played on the first championship and know that, you know, you cannot, you can erase me or try to erase me out of your quote unquote history of it, but. The foundation is outside of the fact because our first championship, period. Man, that's amazing. And and that first championship, it, it, it set the platform. And at, at that time, you were already a three-point, like, beast. And you had been doing three-point championships for, what, five years at that point before y'all won your first championship. And we were winning championships, dunk contests, the three-point contest, MVPs of the All-Star Game. Chicago was amazing at that point. And, yeah. and, and this is basically the highlight of your career. And, and honestly, I trying to understand <laughs> like, that you can play with Dr. J, Larry Bird, and Michael Jordan, like you had a wonderful career, and I just want to let you know that that we noticed that your career is amazing. Like I'm almost speechless sometimes when I think about um, the things you've done. Yeah, man. Yeah, he sounds real speechless. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I know, right? I'm I'm sorry, but to me, I, I went and got your autograph at Markham uh, at, at 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 Fair Play at Markham. 
Oh, remember that. Hey, hey, ask him. You know, we all come to this thing, man. We all have a different life, man. And we all have gifts that we're given. And to get a chance to reach your potential in a given field and, and to be able to say that you're, that you're the best in it, it's not anything that you've done on your own. You've had a great support base. You've had great training. You've had great tutelage. And if you don't, if you don't realize that, then you're a fool. And, and quite honestly, for me, man, it's always been a thing that I realize where my blessings flow from and I continue not to question it and just remember, remember those who came before me that paid the price that I could be here and be able to do the things that I'm capable of doing in a semi-free state. And that's one of the biggest things that now, you know, we're free. And mm -hmm. the biggest thing about this whole, um, I call it a whole incarceration, <laughs> you know, this quarantine thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's giving us an opportunity for freedom. So I tell everybody when you're at the crib, it's just like you're in your covered wagon heading west <laughs> and you get ready to stake your land. So what is it that you visualize? What is it you perceive? What is it that you, that you what can you do from an entrepreneurial state as opposed to just going back to work for somebody? So those are the types of things where we are right now as a people where we've never been. So freedom is ours if we want it. Exactly. And yeah, I know a lot of my, us to do it. It's forcing us yeah. to do it. And I know a lot of my uh, uh, people, uh, they talk to me about your letter to Bush. But what I really want to talk about is what we should do moving forward because you've been an activist right. so long. I don't want to talk about the past. I want you to let these young young guys know and these young people know what's the move next where should we be moving and and yeah. how what is craig hodges in his fight doing uh yeah. and what yeah. should we do to support you uh brother i appreciate it man and one thing you know is in doing in doing these type of this platform that you have man it's giving us a chance to shop on one another and as far as strategies and as far as studies and as far as you know vision and and um not just moving forward with our people, but the fact that we are free now and that we have the ability to come out of this in a mode that's effective for generational wealth for our families, for our babies, for our, you know, that we actually given a, a template of where we're going as opposed to waking up and reacting to the winds of a, of a system that's totally been oppressive. Mm -hmm. That being the case, all of those lessons um, from the past have worked. You know, we just have to select the ones that we want to utilize in this day and time. The one we have to definitely re refocus on where we spend our dollars and our and our wealth. Mm -hmm. if, if not, if nothing comes from this last dance thing, it should show us the commercial, the commercial appeal of Michael Jordan for white people. Mm -hmm. It's not a commercial appeal for Michael Jordan for black people. Mm -hmm. They put this, they put this last dance on at the height of black death in America. They put this last dance on at a point in time when it could have been a unified force of black people mm -hmm. under the banner of uh, Michael Jordan. What would Muhammad Ali do with this? Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I tell people, I tell people, if Muhammad Ali position of Michael Jordan, he would have been Cassius Clay. Hmm. You follow me? Never been Muhammad Ali. Clay, that image. Hmm. So one of the things that we have to do is we have to bring our image makers to the crib and have a sit down. I had a chance to talk to Dr. Jack, 1968 Olympics, who was one of my heroes. I want to bring him to Chicago and honor him like a hero that he is to our people, man, before, you know, he's not here anymore to be able to connect him with that lab to with his next generation mm -hmm. so that they can understand why I stood on the position that I stood on, why Colin Kaepernick was able to stand on what he stood on. It's not like we were, we, these are positions that, or these positions that we took, we, we came up with. And this is a fabric of, of the struggle of black people and that, in that, we, when we are the ones that crossed the finish line with the baton. Now we, what are we going to do with this new platform, this new plate, uh, that's free for us to define, uh, define. Now we have the power of definition to be who we want to be, how we want to be, how do we use mm. our that vision in a perfect mindset. So when you say, what is it, what is it that I envision? I envision us as brothers collectively doing what we're doing now, but we got to remember that right now, 
It's the female energy hmm. that's that's in, hmm. yeah. in leadership. That's in leadership. Don't fight it. We can't fight it. We gotta support it and support it from the standpoint of understanding that the reality is that we were blessed to have kings and queens from where we came. And that that was based upon a 25,000 year time period and that it's a 25,000 year period and it's not for us to fight, but us to be in rhythm with it and not, not be contentious with it, but to know that our role is what our role has always been. Protect the secure, security and maintenance. <laughs> you follow me? Mm -hmm. We got to make sure that we're on our shoes for that. So we got to quit buying, Jim. Yeah, exactly. So we got to quit going. So we got to quit going to the beauty supply. Let's get back to our naturals. You know, for just a right. whole month, let's get to the naturals all summer and see how much mm -hmm. we in October. Mm -hmm. If we don't go to the beauty supply store, we get our clothes back as men. If we get off of these gym shoe kicks, if we get off, what the, what the hell, when did, when did the, who made up the sneakerhead fetish? You know what I'm saying? What is, right. what is that about and why is it? And it's a, it's a, 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 a personal way of pulling wealth out of the pockets of people who need that wealth for sustenance to maintain a mindset for the next generation and we haven't done that but mm -hmm. now i think just watching young brothers like yourself and and young people worldwide that there's a vibration going on in the consciousness that's coming across the planet that it's about human rights mm -hmm. and human rights is is more valuable than civil rights mm -hmm. because now mm -hmm. take it to a whole other platform so you know i look at what colin was able to do with the so, so, uh, social media if my mood would have been well open myself at that during that period of time, it would have been a wrap. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But right. hey, cause I told people, if I get my, if I get my 1992, 93 contract and they give me five to seven million dollars, I'm leveraging six million dollars to the city of Chicago and so that we can do programmatic stuff throughout the Chicago area. Right. Because you're capable of doing that. It's a million dollar issue that pays the right people. It's a couple million dollars in unity. And wow. if we put the money in the right places, we're going to create a unified force. And that's that's the whole thing, is that if they want to make our issue a billion-dollar issue and don't know why they want to give us the billion, it ain't that, man. It's all about, we can show you, I can show you that and prove you that, that Michael Jordan came out of a black woman. <laughs> you mm. follow me? And mm. he, he's a product of us. So don't try to take that product and now you make that product capitalist white. And that's what it becomes. We're now we're capitalist under a system that we were the original capital slaves and now we ain't slaves no more so capitalist system dies because we ain't slaves so hmm. it's falling in front of our eyes hmm. wow but what he, I want to ask him a question, though, in response to that, you know, when he stood up and I remember that as a kid and him going to the White House and he might have to repeat it for me. But I remember him going to the White House and I remember kind of like the ripple from that and how it, it was, you know, it was like kind of viewed as negative in a lot of people's eyes, whatever you want to say. And the same thing with Captain Nick, even though you guys didn't really say anything, you didn't walk up there with a gun. You, it was peaceful. And it makes it hard for a lot of people to believe that we can do it peacefully. You know, do you really think that we can have a peaceful resolution in this country? Because it doesn't seem like anybody else wants peace. Hey, brother, look, look. Let me share something with you. Let me share something with you right there. Our, our power, our power is already secure, man. So when I hear brothers picking up weapons and I, I you got your men do that if that's what you like. But I'm telling you, our power is knowledge and wisdom, and we stand on a platform of reality. And the reality is that our ancestors, even to yesterday, a brother gave his life in Minnesota mm -hmm. to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So it ain't even about us picking our weapons up. We ain't got to. All we got to do is stand shoulder to shoulder with our sisters behind us, letting them know that these sisters behind us got all the wisdom that we need for the ages. Mm -hmm. They can mm -hmm. solve every problem on this planet, but, but, we have to know that. We can't have no doubt that the weapons that we pick up was made by somebody outside of us. So the spirit ain't in us to do that. Our spirit is a certain one that we know that all we got to do is ask for it to rain and it's going to rain. Man. <laughs> hmm. wind coming. So mm -hmm. that's the power. Mm -hmm. That's the power. So like I'm telling everybody right now, with this MJ garbage that's going on, I've never had this much publicity in my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't got no manager. And I'm telling my brother, I got the best in the manager because the creator is my agent. Oh my God. 
was always choreographed my steps in this thing. So it ain't yeah. no, it wasn't no trip that I went to the White House and gave a letter to the president in a manner that no other black man ever went in the history of this country. And you got people like Thank you. Oh, he won more championships than me, and he had the name. He didn't go as an orthodox Muslim in his gift. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There are things that have been guided in my life that goes behind Craig Hodges. Mm-hmm. And right. I'm my brother here today that this is something that I cannot do. You know what I'm saying? This is something that I, I was raised on this like I was raised on Lucas. Mm-hmm. So, and the magnitude the of this is so much heavier than a damn ball. Mm-hmm. So I tell people, I can have a 30, 35 like this, that guy still doing. But my dad, my practice was more about black people than basketball. Basketball was a way of mining to get to black people. And give them black people what they need to get to where we need to go. Not to who, because I want to be a superstar. I want to be, I want to be like Mike. Huh? What is that about? That is, that is a way to address and pull away from what's needed. So when they see the magnitude of Michael Jordan in the city of Chicago, brother, mm-hmm. when you see the magnitude of Oprah Winfrey in Chicago, brother, mm-hmm. and you tell me what other city could have produced them to but Chicago, you couldn't have did it on the East Coast, you couldn't have did it on the West Coast, you had to do it on, you had to do it on the city with big shoulders. Mm-hmm. You follow me? So I'm telling everybody on the planet how important Chicago is to the planet and always has. Mm-hmm. So now, yeah. expect, expect. Don't think, don't hope, expect. And I'm telling your listeners, expect what's mm-hmm. coming for us. And it's coming like this. This thing has gone on coronavirus. It's the Passover. All, all we have to do is just chill. <laughs> That's it. The Passover, we're going to be straight. Mm-hmm. We, look at, we, look at, we look at scriptures being there when you're out of book. Mm-hmm. You're out of people the book. So now all we gotta do is sit still, talk to one another, exercise, drink our water, exercise, research and read, and feel the spirit. Mm-hmm. And I was yeah. with you. And get in rhythm with the time. Don't be behind the time. Quit looking backwards. Quit, quit judging yourself on stuff that you ain't got you no know, control over. All right? Mm-hmm. And if you can be in the wrong ground in the yard at 12 o'clock, Ask the most out of me that you hey, I'm sorry what I did. Let me go forward with what I do with my life and do what's better for these next generation so that I can yeah. feel good yeah. in front of my grandbabies. That's grandbaby look. You know, yes, sir. Know that I did everything possible. Like it took me diving on the floor that loose ball, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going at this thing like that. And that's the part of me that that get kind of upset with my generation of brothers that hoop with me and play football. Where were we at? We weren't talking about nothing. All we were talking about was how can I get endorsement? How many sisters can we get me? How many kids? How many cars? And yeah, we put that on the yeah. next situation. And, hey, that's how you supposed to roll, brother. So, hey, I want my variety now. I want to use I want to, I want to swing. I want to, I want to run bands. I want to, you know what I'm saying? As opposed to, I want to. Let's see and reconstruct the history of my people exactly. so that no other generation will forget the ancestors and what they fought for and what they died for that I might be getting these little scraps that they call an endorsement, a contract. Mm-hmm. So y'all got the y'all got y'all got what's needed and necessary. Now it's just a matter of us threading it together. Because everybody is on this, man. Everybody's doing that something is wrong. We can't just put a post to it because we ain't had a chance to slow down. Exactly. But what's it going to take? What's it, what do you, I mean, I've, I've been saying the same thing, but what is it going to take to so unify us? Back out and make throw these arms in us and we get out there and we start doing that madness again. But I'm telling the rebels out there killing one another, that's coming to an end too because the most high and the return of the female energy as the Messiah Christ Hmm. Alright, so let me know. It's a black thing, it's a black Messiah. Hmm. <laughs> and this thing is already here. So I understand that this is spiritual. Yes. Yeah, it's coming through y'all, and, and, and y'all just, y'all an example of it. Y'all right of it. So I'm telling you, brothers, that I appreciate this. And anything y'all doing, man, keep me posted, man. Y'all, mm-hmm. y'all know. Yeah, things, bro, same. We from the South. We from the South. Yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, we right around the corner. I got one quick. I got one quick. Go ahead, what? I 
I tell people, you have to get to Chicago Heights coming from the South before mm. you got to Chicago. You follow me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a lot of, it's a lot of fabric of the original part of the people that came from the South that we got some, we got some Black Wall Street in us, brother, mm-hmm. and Markham, Harvey, mm-hmm. Chicago Heights, Ford Heights. It's black if you look at if you look at everything south of I eighty, brother, that's us, man. We gotta go and get with it. Hey, and we with it. And I got one quick, is this a little quick question for you? You was really gonna go to China with uh Dennis Rodman to talk to Kim Jong-un? You know, you know it's so cold, man. I, I I really I really feel bad that I didn't get to go and this is what happened. Okay. I was in Halifax, Nova Scotia in Canada at the time. Dennis, I was the first person that Dennis invited. Wow. And people called me and said, Yeah, we're gonna do this trip like they they called me like Four, four months prior. Okay. I tell them I'm up in Canada, so they set up my rigs. And so it's a, it's a snowstorm in Canada, so I get stuck trans- going from um, Halifax to Toronto. Okay. So when I get to Toronto and finally get into China, they didn't leave me a transit visa to get through China to go to North Korea, right? And they were there a day pre- so when I get to China, man, I, I flew for 13 hours from Toronto to Beijing, right? Mm-hmm. I get to Beijing, and I don't have any chance to I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm thinking somebody's going to meet me there. Mm-hmm. So I get there. They tell me to sit down. So I'm sitting there, you know, as a hooper, you got good peripheral vision. And I'm the side of my eye. That's when you catch a long black coat coming from both directions, right? Yeah. Like, man, who is this kid in black? You know, so they, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, and it's like, let's go, and I'm like, where are we going? Back to Canada. I'm like, whoa, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah. <laughs> they say now, I'm like, what? So they, I got my backpack, man, they take me back to where you walk through the little magnetometer and throw your bag on the, the little track, man. They take my bag, unzip every every zipper on the bag, wow. and just put the thing on the, on the, on the belt. And I'm looking like, Really walk me through the uh, mm. and then they look at me like, "Don't get your job up, dude." Wow, <laughs> that's yeah, that's crazy. I'm in a plane that I just got off for for thirteen hours. Yeah. I get back in the plane and the stewardess is looking at me. We had a conversation. They like, well, "What happened?" I, was, <laughs> I ain't no damn to run that shit like that. I'm out came with the food. <laughs> 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 It's, a, it's that time. Mm-hmm. It's like nobody here is helping us. Who else is going to help us then? Yeah. yeah we I know y'all said it, you know? Yeah, we definitely need to inspire the next generation to... Uh, to y'all, doing it. y'all doing it, T. And things like this is giving them opportunities to see that it's, it's an alternative way of going about being a journalist. It's a different way of going about the sport. what you have in your mind that you want to do with your life, with your life energy. Mm-hmm. And that it ain't no... Like right now, the biggest thing I want us to, to vibrate on is that there's no limit to your potential. Mm-hmm. And that those those limits were capped <laughs> with this quarantine thing. So now the sky's the limit is what you want to do. So utilize your energy wisely and the resources are going to come because we're getting ready to get our divine inheritance. They, they want to call the reparations, but no nation on earth will ever give us reparations. So we're getting a divine inheritance that's coming. So this little twelve hundred dollars and two hundred two thousand dollars they giving out, that's money that they just stole from us in the past and they gotta we give they gotta give it back now in this damn time because the creator is having a fucking land and the forces are coming down so heavy on the economic system that there's no other way that they have to repent for what they've done to African people and indigenous people worldwide and they have to do it in a way that they can kind of save face and still feel right. Elite and exceptional, mm-hmm. but we know we know what time it is. We know that the deliverance is already here. We just have to move 
and a good and a sweet spirit, man, and don't be afraid. Yeah, that's 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 the yes, sir. true. And we need more brothers like you, and we're glad you out here preaching and teaching. And uh, we see that you never stop, even even with all odds against you, with all things against you. See, people get afraid of the backlash and not knowing that sometimes like that, that's not the part to be afraid of. You know, it's probably more scarier you handing that letter than the backlash that came because then you was able to fight it as opposed to not knowing what that letter would bring. So I do appreciate you and everything you've ever done for us. And we really need more people like you. I'm trying yes, to reach out and, and get more people. Do you have any organizations or anything to promote or let people know to join or anything to, to, to just get the people it's you know, you know what I want to do, bro? things I want to do is I want us to be able to, um, you know, get together. You know, I don't know how many times you do this again, but the next time that you do it, maybe we can come together and, and get, you know, build, we need to build a site, a website where we can unity, I, I can say the unity of purpose, but it's just a lot of us getting together on a collective base, man, and, and just, just build the direction that we want to go. Mm -hmm. Because we want to, it's all about our creative mindset. And collective man, and we can do whatever is necessary, but it has to be, be remain, has to be positive, and do no harm has to be at the base of it. Mm -hmm. I'm with that, and that's yes, sir. It's a beautiful thing, man. You know, uh, Terry, you got anything else for Mr. Heiser? I want to, I could keep him all day, but I know he got a couple. All right, man. But, all right, I wanted to know, considering you know, I, I'm pretty sure he's. bunch of stuff because we definitely want to do a lot of outreach and and we yeah. we are go ahead terry what you got all right look i gotta ask you a question man now you you had you said a three-point record right yeah. yes correct did it all right now it consider if it was you and steph curry because i'm out here in the bay area so i gotta at least you know i gotta speak on it i gotta speak on it bro how did you feel when you saw steph curry being such a fluid shooter and uh clay thompson as well how did it feel being a fluid shooter seeing them lead the team well you know it's generational man every every generation has this and i love i love how the game is transitioning to now it's, it's, it's positionless and so much of this positionless game is due to um corporate capitalism <laughs> and their analytics. and so the analytics of the game um lends itself to three-point shooting mm -hmm. so Jeff and, and clay they have great strokes and they get a chance to put up 10 15 sometimes 20 in a game which is almost two weeks of shots for me when I was the way we played. Mm -hmm. so, wow. so it would it would be fun. It would be fun to you know to to get a chance to shoot around with him and that kind of thing. But you know I'm, I feel blessed to have played during the golden era of the game. That that was the time when you know you had Kareem on his way out. You could get a little bit of Dr. J. Mm -hmm. You got some of Birdie. You mm -hmm. got MJ up close. You got Magic. Mm -hmm. You know you had. And yeah. you know, yeah, <laughs> legends. All legends. You know, generational images, man, that that define this generation of play for real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Well, that was it, man. Thank you, man. Much appreciated, brother. That's a beautiful thing. We appreciate you a million percent. Uh, man, I appreciate you, man. And once again, uh, to your listeners, um, 
man, everybody be safe, be blessed, and um, keep on studying and researching because it's, it's your time, and, and don't be afraid to to think outside the box and take a step into into your future and not with somebody yeah. that has plans for you. Yeah, well, we appreciate that, man. Definitely. Y'all, that's Craig Hodges. And uh, we're going to put up um, whatever he's doing so that we can support that brother. Thank you, yes, Craig. Yeah. All right, peace and blessings, everybody. Peace and blessings. Yes, yeah, blessings, bro. Yes, sir. Hey, hey man, we just got Craig Hodges on the show, man. That's crazy. Hey, man, we just got Craig. <laughs> I got a feel right now, but look though, now it's time for your segment, so I don't even have to feel. Right. And look at your, hey, new, look at your new, you got a new logo. Look, oh yeah, okay, you got a pack. Why am I eating the stars? Is the planet eating the ninja stars? And what's what's the why is it three different stars? What's is that? The, what's the What's the rainbow? Don't be, hey man, I'm in the bay, man. I'm throwing a rainbow. What's that? It's not a rainbow, man. You look like a rainbow ninja star, man. You, you throwing shade. I'm throwing shade on your new That's logo. The That's the cat I was talking about. Oh, he's so, it is a cat. <laughs> That's the cat I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it, man. All right, listen. Okay. All right, we'll we have to, that'll be another time for another day. Right now, I'm uh, throwing shade on presidential candidates say the dumbest things. Now, I know we might have talked about it a little bit earlier. We might even talk about it more, a little bit more later, man. But I listen, I really don't. I've never seen a president try to get fired more than Donald Trump. In, in my lifetime. And the funniest thing was like, you know, Joe Biden doing what Joe Biden is doing. And, you know, yeah, it ruffled our feathers a little bit. But now coming back into it, like, you know, Trump couldn't even wait a week before he was like, I got to snatch the crown for you. And these are the choices they expect us to make. I think America could do better than this. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people in America can do better than this. And I was watching something with Angela Davis. And, I, and if you guys don't know who Angela Davis is, look her up. And she was speaking on, you know, the fact that we have to stop being part of the two-party system if we really don't don't like it. I mean, there's other people we can vote for, and a lot of people say there's a problem with doing that. But what that does is that puts pressure on these other candidates to make better decisions because they have to debate against these people and they have to campaign against these people. So it's more than just winning the seat because the presidency is only one chair. There's a lot of people in government, you know, and it's, it's, it's so crazy that these are the, this is supposed to be the top of the executive branch. I, and I don't even know what I, there's no explanation for this. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, these are mistakes that kids don't even make in high school. You know what I mean? When they're doing speeches or they're getting interviewed on camera for the first time on TV. And these guys are supposed to be the leaders of the free American world. You know, that's ridiculous, man. Do better, America. I don't care no more. Like, straight up. Like, dude, this is a joke. It was just like the last election. It was a joke, bro. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? It was like, you can't you can't say, hey, it's a free country and anybody can become president as long as you're a Democrat or Republican and you line up with all of our views and our ideals and you got to accept Donald Trump no matter how many times you talk about Mexicans and Asian people and skip over black people for some strange reason. No matter how many times you do it, you got to, and it's like, that's, that is a terrible way to lead a country. We got to do better, man. We definitely do. For real. It's, dude, this is, this is stupid, man. And he he goes, say, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. He said that he's running for president currently. It ain't even like he like off retired. <laughs> he is currently campaigning. And like, you know, imagine if you gave him $10,000 to go sit down and eat with him. And he was like, yeah, man, I feel good. I'll rock, homie. Then you open up the news the next day. He's like, what the fuck did you say? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, Come on, man. Uh, you know, you're right. Uh, they crazy. And they really want to be fired. Like I said, I believe that this is the most racist group of talking presidents. I ain't going to say yeah. that racist, but talking. like this. Look, You get caught, man. Okay, you, if you get caught, I understand. You know what I mean? Like, you get caught saying this. No, nah, man, this is like what you wanted to say. You know, so why, don't you, why don't you go ask China? It's the way you said it. It was right. the... It was the all message. of these guys have a teleprompter, so... You know, yeah. <laughs> hey man, look, the, hey, you know the president is crazy. You know, 
the vice president is crazy. And you know, the other president and vice president was crazy. They got stuff about they got stuff going on about about our president Barack about how he did all this and that. I seen somebody post it, but that's gonna be in mind. But we might as well just talk about it now. We'll talk about that another time. But yeah, man, it's crazy like what they're doing. And it's like I, I remember Obama's speech saying, "Look, man, we can't fix." this in four years y'all know y'all told this country up y'all know it we can't mm -hmm. fix this in eight he years said that coming in he said that coming the first day in his inauguration he said i'm just gonna do what i can do to kind of maybe help because y'all done fucked up y'all know it too everybody know it then they just act like that didn't happen and blame all those problems on Barack. and that's why i know he put it in his inauguration speech so he'd be like no nah, no nah, day one i wanted to make sure everybody was clear y'all messed up bad it wasn't me it was not me. I'm gonna try to do what I can do. And put it back together. I don't know. I, I'm gonna put something on it and make it. I'm gonna put some tape on it. <laughs> I'm gonna try to hold this thing together until we can. You know, I don't know what we gonna do. That, that, that was astonishing to hear a president have to say that as he's becoming president, and then they act like that didn't happen. It's all his fault and his problems. But it's it's bigger than one seat. It's a, it's the government that's doing these things. It's multiple heads that's doing these things. And and that's, that's what I say. I say it's not it, that president is just a a pawn figure. Like yeah, he got to spend his money and do all. Like the queen. It's those it's those uh, judges in the Supreme <laughs> Court. All right. the decisions are. Like like yeah. cedars who gonna die in the Supreme Court. You see what I'm saying? Don't we got people we elected talk about now. Nah, we ain't gonna raise the minimum wage, but we gonna keep ours right where it's at, and we gonna keep our retirement right where it's at. We ain't gonna never miss a dollar. And they get free health care. Free health care. And now we can't vote on free health care for y'all. <laughs> It is universal health care if you're a government official. If you, you better come work. You better be at the post office or something. You got to do something U.S. on it. to get. Like, yeah. that's how they really treat it. You ain't never lying, and, and we sit here and accept it. Nah, man. Like, I ain't going to lie, bro. I didn't even know Angela Davis was still alive. Why not? Uh oh, baby. Did I tell you to come get my groceries or something? Let's go. Are you froze? Huh? Oh, man. <laughs> what? You see that TikTok? <laughs> Grandmama, be oh yeah! Like, oh, get stuck and shit. <laughs> Damon made Damon made fun of you earlier, bro, because you kept. I bet he did, bro. I deserved it too, man. <laughs> you don't think I already know? I can't wait to watch this. You don't think I know? No, Damon burned me. You understand? I felt it. I was over here sweating. I was like, "What is he saying? Oh, I can feel it. It's hot. It's so hot. What is he saying?" <laughs> I bet you did that whole interview with Damon without you. See, so. You need to get your Wi-Fi together. Hey, man, listen, that's why we're co-hosts, man. There's a lot going on, man. Everybody's at home. Everybody, kids doing homework and stuff. Is you know Now you can tell everybody off the computer because I'm straight. So it's just, you know, I used to work in <laughs> telecommunications, and there's, there's traffic and things of that nature that come into the play. And during a certain hour of the day, everybody's on. Anyway, I won't get into it. You can Google me. But listen, it's better now is the point. It's better now. FaceTime <laughs> All right, whatever, dude. Them three terrible, terrible pictures. I was going to point that out. You need, gee, how does it get worse every week? Why did you pick these glamour shot ass photos? You got powder on your face in one of them? You, know why you got powder on your face. Hey, man. <laughs> what year was this? Did you have a driver's license? You like one of them chicks. You go to the big high school photo. That's a, that's a high school photo. That's turnabout or something. Your time. You can reclaim your time at any moment. Just reclaiming my time. You can reclaim it. I'm sorry. It's FaceTime. Hey, I'm sorry. This is my new logo for FaceTime, which is going to change now. Garbage. <laughs> Garbage. You're getting better, though. Hey, but to be straight up, man. This. <laughs> What do you say? I don't know. I can't hear you. You you frozen. Uh, the fact that you start. Yeah. Are you trying to? Oh, you trying to find me? Yeah, that's funny. What? Hey, look though, it's FaceTime. Look, and in my face. Nah, man, it's your time, bro. I'm gonna let you have it. What yeah. I want to talk about is one thing that everybody should notice, and that is the sign language interpreters behind all these government figures. 
Now, I don't know if y'all been watching, but these sign language interpreters have been signing more than just English. They sign in Ebonics, they sign in Attitude, and they sign in all... I'll, look, if y'all watch today, just think about it today. Prisker, Governor Prisker's sign language dude was signing like he was a Three Stooges. He wasn't even signing like... He was doing symbols that Molary and Kurt, this one was like he, and then he was doing stuff like, how you gonna make this face as a sign language interpreter? Like, what is this face? What is this sign language? He's just creating his own sign language. And look, did y'all see Lori Lightfoot's a sign language interpreter? This lady had an added, she was sign language with her shoulders, like, hmm. And then it was like, how you going as a sign language? What does this mean? Lori Lightfoot wasn't talking that much mess. How do you, did, I don't know if any of y'all seen this, but this was the most funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. And these sign language interpreters need to get their life together. Shay, you see this? Shay, you they, are, they are getting it in, dude. These sign language interpreters. I didn't see Lori Lightfoot's one. I got to go YouTube that because I got to buy it because she was just like. Bro, and she then, was how we. Yeah. <laughs> like, what that? does that mean? Like, things are getting kind of tight in here. Hey, but you know what's funny, though? Know, this is the first time I understood every sign. <laughs> I knew everything. Right. <laughs> you, you stopped listening. You was just like, mm -hmm. you over there signing back and shit. You're like, man, back. Like, like, even the people, though, know, their facial expressions be so funny, bro. Like, they yeah, be dropping them signs. They be like, mm, uh, mm. it's like they like bodybuilders, but they. You know what I'm saying? They be posing. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, some big face. If you if you watch the um the um uh, JB today, his his interpreter was like a goofy. Like, cause I was <laughs> Lori's. Lori's was straight like hood ghetto West Side. She was she was out there cribbing and shit. How you gonna choose yeah. gum? What was that? What did what does gum mean? She, like she was doing everything. Like you can't chew gum when you sign. You sometimes people gotta read your lips because they be doing the lip reading thing too. Now you smack it and they just hear smack smack. They don't know what's going on. <laughs> but like, okay, she Priscus was like he was real goofy. You you dude, watch JB Priscus speech today for Chicago News. Any news they showed his speech. The interpreter. I promise you, you gonna you gonna laugh when you <laughs> this dude. He was literally. But I always been kind of laughing at some of these interpreters. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> right, like they they like. Oh, I'm gonna shine today. It's your speech, but it's my time to shine. Like they be out there like them sign flippers doing sign language. It's like a hybrid between sign flippers and sign language. Oh man, yeah, that's a we turn around like what you doing at 360 for? You signed it. <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna sign like me. Okay. I've been signing my whole life. I was signing in grade school. Said, I can hear it. Like I can hear it everything. I just want to sign. The greatest my life you ever seen in my life. <laughs> All his tattoos and sign language on his body, like yeah, like God saves, put it be the sign. <laughs> mute next time <laughs> hey watch out you gotta make up your own hey that's what we gonna do online we gonna mute the tv and speak what we think the sign language oh that would be dope because i was sitting there like what because hey bro remember when we used to play like cartoons but put rap music over it so it looked like the gargoyles was the wu-tang and shit mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying you play the radio but i had to mute the tv yeah do the same thing we used to sit there and <laughs> Flip it on like, yeah, we're gonna interpret it ourselves. Man, that's hilarious. I'm down and drinking. <laughs> and drink again. It's I'm drinking again. Time. You know, we got a lot of road stories and we have a lot of people online today, and we had a lot of good comics on the day. It was one, two, and three. That's me, Terry, and Damon. Uh and mm -hmm. okay, thank you, Kakila. Um appreciate that. Um, our road story for today, I think Shay would tell us our road story for today. Nope. Nope. So this is the thing. Y'all think that we like, y'all probably think we practice this or something. Like, which story you want to tell? And it's hard to say which, because we just be just picking them out the air. So I'm trying to think of a good one. All right. 
I remember this is when I realized, and face you gonna give you a feel this. This is when I realized the power of comedy. Okay, we were performing at Uptown Comedy Club in Atlanta. All right, and uh, this is like right when we really kind of got too shady to like a ten minute smash up. Like you know, we we knew we could smash in ten. You give us fifteen, twenty, we got it. But ten, we knew we was ten. We we got to stand and know in the first two minutes. You know what I mean? It was like that's we built it. Like Damon said, you come out hard, you in hard. That was the movement of time. But anyway, we had uptown. If you've never been to Uptown Atlanta when it was in Buckhead, man, it used to crack in there. It was upstairs, man. They had the beautiful portraits, and everybody came in there sharp, right? It was this dude in the front row. He had on a white suit. Me and me and Face on stage, we did the whole world joke, sent the room up, man. messed around, and dropped my beard. Do you remember oh, that? I do remember that. I, do remember that. I, I, went, I went to grab it or something, and I dropped it, and it hit the dude in the white suit who had to be at least six foot something. Man. I do remember man. that. In Atlanta. Right, with this girl, I'm like, this about to be a problem, right? Yeah. And I was, I mean, because if it was me, it could have been a problem. I might have, I might, I might have caused a scene. You know, anybody could cause a scene. I just spilled beer on this man. He, he cleaned his girl clean in the front row. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was like, man, you know, I got, I was like, oh shit, hey man, I'm sorry. And bro, just did like this. He was like, oh man, no, keep going, keep going. I just yeah. spilled yeah. beer on this man at the show. He clean, and he like, nah, man, he brushing it all. Like, keep going, bro. Y'all kill him. Keep going. Yeah, we and that's when I realized the power of comedy. Yeah, yeah. That's a huge, that's a huge, that's a huge, power. huge that, power. That comedy power that is comedy amazing. Power is amazing. Cause I thought dude was from the Killers, and we stopped. I've never seen your face. He was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you did it. Get you in this, bro. I'm sorry, bro. I didn't mean to get you in this. It was like a. He looked at me like, mm, man. We were just killing it. I'm like, I oh, know. And I looked at him. I'm like, bro, I'm sorry. And he was just you know, like, you know how we was back in the day. We just had to get them together, goddamn. I mean, yeah, we, I mean, I just didn't want to come. I, I felt like it was no other way it was going to be resolved. I'm like, he about to jump up on this stage. We right in front of him. Ain't nothing stopping. Ain't no security. We about to get it in. That's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, but it was like, that was the, the, you know, we was in the middle of like, I'm not just saying it because I think we was funny. Like I'm telling you, like we was tearing that crowd up. We had only been on stage about two, three minutes, beginning of the set, and I, I blew it. So the thing with more of the story is for these comics on the road is uh, sometimes we still comic and you're funny as fuck. You can do whatever you want. You do whatever you want. Man. You can throw beer on people. I see people do it. Just. Spray beer in the audience. I'll be like, that was my y'all still in my bit. Who saw me do that in Atlanta? I was the first person <laughs> now, throwing that's beer on people. Funny for that to work. Right. The audience do not like it when you're terrible and you spill beer on them. Trust me. They they don't like that. <laughs> nah. Like, yeah, we came up out of there with fans. I don't know how we pulled that up. I was like, hey man, we got it, bro. I think we straight. After that, I think we straight. <laughs> Oh, shit. All right, look. Guys, ladies, gentlemen, this was a wonderful show. We had, yeah, man. We had Damon on the show. Damon Williams. Shout out. Damon Williams, man. Happy Laugh tonight, time. too, man. Laugh tonight. We're going to put the links in the description. We're going to put the links in the, in the, in the repost, and we're going to put them in the description, man. Laugh tonight, man. Uh, buddy, uh, who was that from Chicago? It, it, it was on there, too. The, the tape. Uh, Mike Samp from Chicago. Oh, in LA, who else? Mike Sam. He said six people from Chicago film. Actually, I got Kendall on my show tomorrow. We'll talk about that tonight, some more tomorrow on the radio show. But um, yeah, tonight we had Damon. He doing laugh tonight. Make sure y'all look for that Damon Williams comedy. Check it out down here, Damon Williams uh, at Instagram and Facebook and yeah, DamonWilliamsComedy.com. Yeah. Is uh at DamonWilliams.com. He got he got a bunch of websites and stuff. Well, honestly, is- anybody who's watching this probably already know who Damon Williams is, so it's just redundant. We just doing it out of respect because I know if y'all looking at us think we funny, I know y'all know who he is. But if you don't, get in tune. So look, he uh, if you Dennis, don't, we gonna put him on and, and put him in the thing uh, and put him in the descriptions. Then we had Craig. Um, I know a lot of y'all wanted us <clears> to be ratchet. And ask all the ratchet questions, but that's not what we about. We yeah. not even about that. We about unity and bringing us together. And he still gave us a lot of gems and a lot of gold and a lot of yeah. beautiful things for you guys to know. 
He still told y'all what you wanted to know about the last dance and everything anyway. We didn't even have to ask him. He did it for us. So yeah. appreciate Craig and appreciate everything he's bringing. Make sure we we going to put in the description his um, uh, uh, his uh, uh, website and things to look out for what's going on with him next. Yeah, check out the king, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. So shade, shady throwing shade on the presidents and the vice president. Hey, uh, it's just he, <laughs> come on, man. They, they want us to say, okay, I'm with him. That's why I couldn't. I'm be straight up. That's why I couldn't vote for Hillary. I'm not gonna say I'm with her because she had too much shit going on. You know what I mean? I can't be associated with her. It's the same thing what's going on with Trump. It's the same thing that's going on. Well, not really much. Biden made one mistake, but that's one mistake too many. And I'm not saying I can hold that against everything else he's done, but it's like, come on, man. We got to do better at America. We are yes, not sir. killing it right now at America. I'm going to yes, that. We got to do better in America. Let's we got to do better, man. We just got to reset. So let's come out of this better. Mm -hmm. So, ah. thank y'all. God bless y'all. Yes, sir. Thank you. Show Two Shady Presents. I talked a little bit about about the sign language people. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure that but out. But that's later. real. We, did, we should probably do that. We should do a video where we interpret. We should just play the video and then don't play the sound. Hey, we will do we'll, that. We'll just say what we think they're saying. Thanks. Yeah, that's that was a funny one, Akiva. Thank you for that. That's pretty good. Because they be getting it. Yeah, thank you guys. And that's Thanks, our time. We've been, we've been Bo and Terry. I'm Robert yes, Terry. And it's, we love you. Praise y'all. Thank you guys. Peace. See y'all around. Yeah. Terry Dawson in the building. Spotty Danger. Y'all know what it is. Ah, Touche Radio.